This video provides an overview of tools and resources demonstrated during a field training for Pennsylvania Soil Health Partnership collaborators that will enable them to translate the science of soil health into accessible information that producers can use in the ground. The tools in the soil health bucket can be used over time to identify changes, to compare effects of different management practices or systems, and as a gateway to conversations about implementing conservation practices. Guidance documents, including procedures and interpretations for each component of the soil health bucket, are available on the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service website. Whether training in a large group or working one-on-one -on -one with a landowner, the best place to start is to learn about the soil. What type is it? Are there important topographical features or signs of erosion? What about the location of water features or sensitive areas? It's also important to talk to the landowner and discover the management history. With details in hand, test sites can be selected and the investigation into soil structure can begin. I can't deal with all this residue. Don't have equipment to deal with the residue. You have some pretty good root penetration going down through here. I, I didn't measure what I had Sunday night, but I think it was new. Let's everybody grab your wire flag and it's not it's it's a little hard as dry as it is but you if you get right at the end of your wire flag you'll be able to see that little less uh, resistance on the surface versus maybe around six inches. Uh, we have a penetrometer as well. It works very well when the soils are near field capacity. When evaluating physical properties in the soil, look at the structure and how particles of soil are grouped together or aggregated. Explaining this going on in that soil profile. To be a, a disc pan. Each soil will have structural differences, so consult a reference guide to identify specific properties in the field. Soil infiltration tests help demonstrate the ability of each field soil to absorb water and is an indicator of how it will manage runoff. Two of your book is, is all of the guides for physical properties assessment. I've got the guide for the soil glue demonstration. All of you have seen this, but every time that uh, you show this, I think, uh, especially on a producer's farm, this is this is uh, really drives the point home on the importance of soil aggregate stability. Yeah, you wanna you wanna let it air dry, you know, like this. I use the windshield of my pickup quite often. So at the beginning of the day, I'll grab the different management systems and and then I'll sit the cups on the hood or someplace level or the tailgate and and do it right there. So we're gonna see what happens. So, Joe, which one was this one, Joe? This was uh, right out here in the field. Out in the middle. This is, this is the one uh, from right here. So this one, I don't know what's gonna happen with that because it was so compacted, whether the water will get in or not. And this was what? up by the road in the grass area. And that was forested. This one was uh, so well 
aggregated that I couldn't hardly, it was so crumbly, mm -hmm. I couldn't get a big enough clod. So let's see what's happening. So, you know, obviously this is the direction we want to push it to, okay? Sure. Um, yeah, the question that he had is about the foam. And so we had some living cover in here. So this, typically, if you see this scum, it's some of the root ex exudates. Now we can examine the chemical properties of the soil. Soil chemical properties includes tests for electrical connectivity, soil pH, nitrogen, and phosphorus levels. So, yeah. Depends on if you have it was organic corn. Yeah. If you could have your nitrogen and organic corn, that's why I say it's not valid. Because if you could actually have mineralization from organic matter feeding your crop, then you actually wouldn't have any denitrification or any leaching going on in a perfect world. Well, but yeah, but also in cold temperatures, you have less activity. I think that's part of the reason that they put it on. Right, right. So it doesn't convert to nitrate. The urease, yeah, yeah. I, I never really planted corn yet. Um, so yeah, that's why in the Midwest sometimes they'll put uh, nitrogen inhibitors with it. Finally, observe the indicators of biological activity in the soil. Okay, you got a little bit of the rhizosheath action here. Uh, this is, this is uh, one concern I do have here is I got quite a bit of lateral movement here. But uh, you're looking for the fibrous roots. You would ideally be looking for straight. So you got some, you can see where it's hitting some compaction layers. It's got crooks there. But what happens too is you get you know, these uh, soil aggregates that stick to the, uh, the plant like that. I would say this is moderate. I mean, it's not, I mean, so it's not working real hard to get nitrogen. So, so it doesn't have to have as many symbiotic relationships, but it's pretty good, I, you know, because you got lots of, lots of hair, fibrous part of it. Where is it? So yeah, wet it. These tests can uncover a lot of information about the soil. Landowners, farmers, and students will be able to see the results, but it is crucial that you relate what they're seeing to the production and conservation practices they use on the farm. Additional details about soil health buckets, including a supply list, procedural details, and interpretive information, are available in the Soil Health for Educators section of nrcs.usda.gov.